We now focus on a bombshell development in the Jeffrey Epstein saga. Our focus is on Nadia Markinko, someone who is known as Epstein's global girl. Following the release of the explosive court documents, she has vanished, she disappeared, just as a New York court unveiled details of Epstein's extensive sex trafficking network. Now, for the unworst, this network allegedly involved high-profile figures, including two former U.S. presidents, a member of the U.K. royal family, and several celebrities. Nadia Markinko, however, is none of those things. She was just another girl in Yugoslavia, until Jeffrey Epstein got involved, that is. He bought Slovakia-born Nadia, then known as Nadia Markinkova, from her family who were settled in Yugoslavia. Her father, Peter Markinko, was an architect from Slovakia. Jeffrey Epstein reportedly took her to the U.S. with him. This was in the year 2001. She was just 15 years old then. From an Eastern European teen, Nadia became the victim of a horrible crime. Testimonies from other victims suggesting that Jeffrey Epstein himself often referred to her as his Yugoslavian sex slave. He even bragged about his prized possession. While Nadia has claimed that she has come to the U.S. to become a model in 2000, this assertion is on very shaky ground. Maritza Vasquez, the bookkeeper for Epstein's MC2 modeling agency, has said that Nadia never worked. She was never a model. She was living at Jeffrey Epstein's place, according to him. After years of abuse, the underage victim, Nadia, according to reports, was pushed to become an abuser within Epstein's network. Nadia Markinko now faces serious allegations. Allegations of procuring and engaging in sexual abuse with underage girls alongside Epstein. Back in 2008, when he was originally charged, she was not prosecuted and was granted immunity. At the time, Nadia was still underage. It was at the time also clear that she herself was a victim. Nadia has evaded any formal charges so far. There are multiple layers to Nadia's association with Jeffrey Epstein. She travelled around the globe with him as per reports and then she is speculated to have become his pilot. In fact, in a 2017 video, Nadia Markinko appeared as both a high fashion model and a skilled pilot. She was frequently seen travelling with Epstein on his infamous Lolita Express. The Lolita Express was a private plane used for transporting underage girls. Her role as Epstein's pilot remains unconfirmed. She was the CEO of AVI Loop, a company offering targeted aviation marketing. Before her entry into aviation, Nadia also dabbled in the real estate business. The place she lived at was also owned by Jeffrey Epstein's real estate developer brother, Mark. Before he was found dead in jail in 2019, Nadia visited Jeffrey in his Florida prison cell 90 times. Nadia is just one among hundreds of people related to Jeffrey Epstein's heinous crimes. The recently unsealed documents from a 2015 civil suit implicate various prominent figures. Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's former girlfriend, Prince Andrew of the UK royal family, so on and so forth. His associates are now coming under increased scrutiny. Prosecutors and lawyers for the victims are considering how to proceed. While we have heard of lapses in commercial planes, glitches in the aircraft of world leaders, are seldom heard of. That is because planes used by them are high-tech flying fortresses. They are equipped with advanced defense systems and designed for ultimate security. Yet the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau finds himself in a floundering aircraft again and again. It all happened during Trudeau's family trip to Jamaica. For obvious security reasons, the Canada Prime Minister has to travel on a military plane. But after his jet broke down in the Caribbean island, the Canadian Armed Forces had to send another aircraft. This is the second time, by the way, in just four months, that a glitch in Trudeau's official aircraft has risked stranding him overseas. The spokesperson for Canada's Defence Department said, and I'm quoting, we can confirm two Royal Canadian Air Force CC-144 Challengers were in Jamaica supporting transport for the Prime Minister. According to the news outlet CBC News, the issue was identified on the 2nd of January. 
Of the two planes that were dispatched following that glitch, the second one carried a maintenance team. They arrived a day later to rectify the problem with the first aircraft. The culprit, CC-144 Challenger aircraft, reports say they have been recently acquired by the Canadian Armed Forces. As I said earlier, this is not the first time that Trudeau's plane has faced a glitch. In September 2023, remember, during the G20 summit in India, a fault in Trudeau's aircraft delayed his departure by two days. Earlier in 2019, Trudeau's VIP plane collided with a wall when it was being brought to the hangar. This freak incident damaged the plane's nose as well as the engine. And before that, in 2016, Trudeau's plane experienced technical issues and had to return to the Ottawa had to return to Ottawa within an hour after takeoff. He was on his way to Belgium to sign trade deals with the European Union. What is going on? How is the country letting his leader fly in dysfunctional planes? The repeated snags of the Prime Minister's aircraft raising serious questions regarding Canada's state properties. It has already sparked a debate about the country's crumbling infrastructure it is an embarrassment to say the least for Canada. After all, if technical snags delay the world leaders' travel plans, does not, doesn't it reflect poorly on the country? It might come as a surprise for you, but the Canadian Prime Minister flies in an aircraft that is nearly 40 years old. CC-150 Polaris, the one that broke down in India, is most commonly used as uh, the Canforce one. The Canadian Prime Minister uses this aircraft for international trips. Of the five CC-150s in Canada's possession, only three are currently in service. In July last year, the Canadian government had said that it is buying new planes, but it is not clear when the new fleet will be up for use. By the looks of it, the sooner Canada acquires new jets for its Prime Minister, the better it will be for Trudeau's image. We've all been told to dream big and follow our dreams. How many of us have taken this seriously enough or taken things to the extreme level? Three schoolgirls just into their teens hailing from the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu with a total of barely 170 US dollars or 14,000 rupees in hand embarked on a dream journey. It is said that their plan was to travel all the way from their hometown in Karur, Tamil Nadu to South Korea. Why would they do that? Now, it's said that they did all of this to meet their stars and idols, the Korean pop band BTS. Now, even by flight, the journey from India's east coast to Seoul, South Korea, takes at least 10 hours. In this case, they wanted to make it by hook or crook, just based on information from online searches. Their plan involved taking a train from their hometown to the nearest major port city and then to take the sea route from India's east coast to Seoul, South Korea. That is a distance of more than 5,500 kilometers. And guess what? They did not even possess a passport or any travel documents for that matter. Hailing from very modest backgrounds and with absolutely no knowledge of their parents, the schoolgirls are said to have hashed this plan based on internet searches. All they could manage for their trip was 14,000 rupees, like I said. That too taken from piggy banks and small savings. They started their journey on the 4th of January when they took a train to Tamil Nadu's capital city. And on arriving there, they rented a hotel room and stayed there overnight. Meanwhile, with the three 13-year-olds having gone missing, police complaints were lodged back in their hometowns. The authorities undertook efforts to look for them in the nearby districts and the railway stations, transit points, etc. Right after the overnight stay in Chennai, the girls realized that their dreams were not just lofty but also impractical, that it was not worth it. 
Later, they took another train to return to their hometown. And midway through that journey, they were stranded at a railway station where they had disembarked to purchase food. And seeing these young girls loitering around the railway station, the personnel there grew suspicious and approached them. What followed was a long session of counselling by the child welfare authorities. It is said that the girls knew in a lot of detail about the Korean band BTS and were huge fans. However, for the foreseeable future, their BTS dreams would be confined to only their phones and their hearts.